people outside of the city, but I think there's equally qualified people inside the city that would, in my opinion, you take care of home, you just, that's... Well, you're you know, not even talking about someone has to live in the city. It, they could be moving to the city as a condition of doing this. Sure, and, and that's, that's even... You're not they, 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 yeah. city manager to someone who already lives. Yeah, sure. Because somebody moves in to take a job. They're going to know. They're, they're, they're just not really make him as committed to someone that already lives here. I mean, in reality, well, it will not. He's come in and are she, and, and they're doing a job. They you may be here four years, they may be 10 years. Council, who's elected, they go into UDF and raise drive through and go up to Classic Pizza, and they're talking to all these people. You know, they know the community. Not saying that on lunch break, a city manager who lived outside couldn't do that, and they do do that, but Living inside the city, you get to know it a lot more than you would. And it's just my opinion. I, I'm, did Mr. Pierce live here? I don't know. That was just one way That was before your time. Both these options have yes. valid aspects to yes. them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The thing right now is we really can't make up our minds right now until we get a legal ruling on it. We're debating, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when we get more information, then we can beat it to death. Okay. You good, Mr. Roll? Okay. Uh, no, you're not good. One thing I will note. <laughs> one thing I will note is I have asked the city manager and the staff on several occasions to uh, consider being a part of this process, particularly as we move into these topics that uh, affect them directly. And uh, you know, as we can see, we haven't had any yet. So, how directive can we be? I don't think we have this commission power. has the authority to direct anyone. That's why I'm asking. So, nor do I. So, <laughs> but I, I strongly suggested that, you know, looking ahead, because the next couple articles, city manager, uh, administrative departments, personnel, all deal with the aspects that impact directly the city staff and the city managers. So that I just wanted you to know the offer had been made to them to, um, you know, come and be a part of this process. Maybe it's time to let him know that that's the area we're in and that might be well, more that, I already said that yes okay. mm -hmm. never mind can I just say one more quick thing on this what if we just took out the um, unless otherwise temporarily why don't we just take out the temporarily and then just say unless otherwise authorized by council and it gives the option to the council to decide what they want if they want a city manager that does or does not is required to live in the city and that way it wipes it out and can go either way i think that that part's in and i don't want to speak above you but i think that part is in there because it says but shall become a resident within six months what? so that's saying they have the city manager has to become a resident and then if we take out the temporarily I, I think we're uh, okay. Yeah, I see you're saying it. Would, I don't have to be a temporary thing to be a permanent. Speak to the council. Okay. They decide what type of city manager they want. Because now council is determining how long temporary is. Yes, exactly. Otherwise, then all they have to do is determine yay or nay. You live here, you don't live here. And I think that's a good a good idea as long as the language itself is still valid from a legal perspective. That is, if you, you're not on the side of agreeing, you know, that someone should live, and then you might not want that. But, but that's a middle ground for sure. So are we going to now wait for the... I think that you guys should get more information before you finalize a recommendation on this. I think we're speculating at this point and kind of going in circles, and it might just be better to uh, gather the information and come back to this and re-attack it then. Is this a good place to adjourn, or do you want to go too much farther beyond this? Or, well, I'm really hoping that we get through a few more sections at a time. So, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and and the fact that you know we we are meeting weekly, which is much more frequently than a lot of boards and commissions, and. Uh, 
you know, hopefully we'll get through this at some point. So let's keep going. We'll just come back to come back to six one when we have more. And particularly if it, it, you know, maybe you don't have to spend as much time discussing each individual section, but if at least we could identify pieces of information that you think would be helpful in formulating your thoughts around those areas so that I could start doing the legwork to get that information um, back to you so that you can make some final decisions on some of these things. And on the last topic of the city manager residency requirement, I would empower each one of the members of this committee to go out and chat it up with your fellow neighbors and, and things that don't. Lord of you, social media, Godspeed you. But, um, you know, just chat up with your local neighbors while you're out for coffee, kind of get a feel of, you know, what they're thinking, kind of get a, you know, um, a neutral party view. Um, I, I mean, this is something, like I said earlier, it's been tackled widely throughout the state. So even if you know somebody lives in another city far, far away. So that's all I got to say. Thank you for that. All right. If we have nothing else to announce, we'll move on to 6-2 then. Powers and duties. Thank you. Um, after I got home from work today, I did see an email in my email inbox at uh, 4.20 p.m. of some research on the city manager uh, residency requirements. Um, eight pages worth, quite, quite a bit there. Um, I, I still have not had a chance to go through it all. Um, on top of that, um, the email is marked as attorney-client privilege. Um, I would like to caution this board to make sure that uh, this document, unfortunately, is, no, is a privileged document to this commission and cannot be released, nor its contents to the public. Now, this board and commission does have the availability to vote to make it public um, and to release that document to the uh, to general public uh, for research or input. Um, but I, I wanted to caution everybody on that. Um, I have not reached out to our city attorney to, uh, you know, get any reason why he placed the attorney-client privilege on there um, and kind of prevented that from uh, from that happening. Um, but I would like to go ahead, because I haven't had time to thoroughly review eight pages, is to go ahead and possibly push this off to the next discussion or the next meeting. That way we can just roll on to the next topic. Okay. Thank you. May I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Shaw, what is the guidance that, we have, that says we have the right to release this to public when the attorneys told us not to? It was actually a um, verbal um, uh, verbal opinion given by Alan Schaefer, and I believe it was backed up by David Montgomery um, at two uh, city council meetings um, uh, regarding some information that was given in the back room to city council members um, that the city council at that time had the availability to make that document public as the attorney because we are the client, um, and that and those powers would come down to this commission as well. Maybe it's not all-encompassing. Maybe it was specific to that instance. I would caution us to ever to do that without knowing sure. what specific authority we have. And, and, and that's why I would yeah. suggest that we wait to even discuss this until we get further clarification on, on discussing anything that's in that eight-page um, opinion um, and discussing that topic here tonight. Okay. If what he says stands, then since this is broadcasted live, we wouldn't be able to discuss it. That's what he's saying. Correct. But I mean, we wouldn't ever be able to discuss it. That's correct. Uh, That's inconvenient. Begs, wait a minute. I guess it begs the question of what we would need to discuss since we asked him for a legal interpretation and he gave it. I would like to have some documentation from Alan that, you know, that because he put confidential attorney-client privilege on there, that this is something that we can discuss at this meeting, open, private, you know, public in, in, a, in a session, um, as prior times with city council events, that these items have come down, we don't discuss those. Okay. Do we need, is that something we can just email him? Or? Um, uh, yes, I unfortunately, like I said, since I got home, I traveled 75 from Miamisburg. I didn't have a whole lot of time to get that email. Um, either Bonnie or myself, I, I mean, or even Nancy can send that email out. Yeah. Okay. So then there, all that has to be put on hold then until we hear back. Right. So. Well, this isn't, uh, well, wait a minute. This one, oh no. This is, wait a minute. 
this is uh, section 6.01. Okay, this is past what we're submitting. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's this well point. past that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just pick up then. Uh, we just left off. Well, we made it all the way through section six, like last week, minus 6.1. So we'll just start right into section seven. last week picking up from last week uh looks like you guys were busy last week in your discussions when i came back i had all kinds of notes and um i guess where we would probably logically start would be back to the issue of um 601 which is the remaining section in uh article six dealing with the city manager um that's the only one that hasn't been finalized as to you know whether action is going to be taken on that uh, there was a lot of back and forth in terms of the citations and information that you were seeking in terms of uh, clarification on what's permitted in terms of residency. Um, Mr. Schaefer had provided uh, the Charter Review Commission last Wednesday with a rather extensively detailed memorandum about residency and citing some of the case law and um, issues around that. So. Um, I guess it would be up to the commission to decide how you want to proceed with that information and in, in terms of its relevance to section 601. Mrs. Birch. Um, based on the uh, interpretation by our attorney, I would believe that I would recommend that we strike the last sentence of 6.01. The state case law, I believe from the email that he sent, says that we cannot enforce that, correct? That's right. Okay. That was the bottom line after eight pages. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Mr. Truman. Um, <clears throat> yes, I just had a uh, comment. Um, looking over, and I did read the, uh, our, his opinion on that, uh, but according to the, Cincinnati memo, which was put out uh, by their solicitor office as well, which was their law department. Um, it talks about, uh, for the Cincinnati memo, this memo was written in uh, consultation with the solicitor's office to clarify the residency requirements imposed on senior officers of the city of Cincinnati pursuant to Ohio Re revised code section 733.68 um, and it, it goes on to talk about how it requires officers of municipalities to be electors of the uh, mun municipality. Um, this was done in 2014. So I think what we have is it could be the way I'm reading it, this was done by uh, the Cincinnati lawyers. Our lawyer had another opinion. There could be a conflict of opinions as well. Mr. Schaefer did indicate to me that he had actually called the solicitor down in Cincinnati and had a conversation and said, how do you accomplish this in light of the case law and the decisions that have been made um, in the courts on this issue? And the, the bottom line response from them was, well, no one's sued us yet or challenged us on it. So, right. it, you know, it hasn't been uh, upheld in litigation. Um, so, you know, it stands as no one's challenged it yet, but that's the exception rather than the rule in, in terms of what most communities throughout the state have done in response to the case law that's been decided on this issue. Right. And that, and that's kind of where I would say that, uh, I would just from the points I made before about wanting our city manager to be an elector of our city. I, I would say that keeping this in the charter wouldn't hurt. Um, but if it's not enforceable, not enforceable but taking it out, you can, it, it could be enforceable if council would enforce it. Uh, according to Ohio we're at revised code. No, according to the Cincinnati memo. Yeah, but the Cincinnati memo isn't the 
the bottom the, line. The, the bottom according, line. Was but actually, the, according to the Ohio Revised Code, yes, because in 733.68, 